All right, we're live. We were called gay. Is it over? Ah, it might be over. It might be over. It's literally over. So yeah, I'm here with Solbra, as you can see. Needs no introduction, but yeah, it's really good to have you on. Really good to have you on. We've done two interviews before, actually on your channel back in the day. So it's mm -hmm. good to have you on, on uh, my channel here. And uh, yeah, we have of course a lot to a lot to talk about. So I'm just gonna get straight into it, on the deep end, and ask if you believe in God. Straight into it. Uh, I think there's a lot of context that needs to be said in order to answer this question appropriately. So I'll take you through it. I grew up in a religious school, Anglican, but it was kind of like a soft religion. We had church and we had congregational singing twice a week and also a religious education period, an hour or so uh, a week. And we were given this Christian kind of denomination and we were told to believe it and shut up. Mm. And at the very core of my essence and my soul, if someone says that something like that to me, then I'm just going to reject it. It mm. doesn't matter if what you're saying, even if it's the truth, if you can't tell me why or show me why mm. so that I can personally understand it, I'm just going to go against that. Yeah. So I rejected that. You know, I'm not going to believe it. Just like explain it. It doesn't make sense to me that this. And But it's the literal interpretation of religion, which... Most people haven't had the appropriate induction or research or learning to actually understand the kind of maybe metaphysical and, mm. and spiritual things behind like what are the words written in the Bible and things like that. So that was what I was introduced to through my teenage years. And so the rebellion stage or the rejection stage was, okay, well, then this must be BS. Mm. If you can't explain it to me. And that's one of the ways that I think they get people to go against uh, maybe their potential for spiritual capacity is to kind of usurp that whole experience by giving you something that's so obviously dumb mm. and like not explain any of it. Yeah. So I was an atheist in, uh, in my teenage has the, years. Has that stage, yeah. <laughs> Everyone has that stage, the Reddit stage. Uh, <laughs> thank the Lord I didn't wear a fedora or, <laughs> or anything. But um, yeah, so we had several years of that and it was good and I would focus on science and biology and uh, I think they have their places and you should always look for the logic and the, the proof, the evidence of things. Mm. Uh, so I, that formed part of my academic viewpoint, I guess. And then as I got to college and started doing more of my own research into philosophy, mm. into the metaphysical yeah. and how things actually worked, you stumble upon things which may say, oh, okay, the things in the Bible are interpretation. Mm. And just for the record, I think that there probably were literal events and also metaphysical yeah. interpretations, probably both, mm -hmm. right? With most things, it can be interpreted as both in the Bible. Um, so it's, it's really just discovering what many, many thousands of people have discovered over the years, mm -hmm. which is, you know, there are these fundamental truths, laws, principles, mm -hmm. concepts, which when you download them into your mind, you can interface with this reality way, way better mm -hmm. and more successfully. And that is really the ultimate point of truth is if you download that information into you and your, inf your uh, perception of the world gets better and your experience of the world gets better and you're more effective to be able to do what you want to do in a happier way mm. to more positively influence more people, that's really the truth if yeah. there is a truth. Because truth even in itself is subjective in a lot of ways. And even yeah. if you have evidence for things something can go against that evidence. So like how much evidence do you need to say that's the truth, but this experience of reality also exists. Mm. The truth is very, you know, perceptive because the reality is the mind and we all have a different mind with different downloadable programs, beliefs. So, you know, that that's besides the point. So I'm delving into all of these concepts and understanding that, okay, what is God? It's not old man in the sky being like, you need to stop doing this. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And that's really the atheist conception of God. It's like, where is he? What is mm, he? He's yeah. watching everyone all at once. It's like, yes and no. Um, so the metaphysical interpretation and also just the personal experience where I tried to interact with God, which I is now this force and energy that permeates all things. Yeah. That is essentially what I believe God to be today mm. is what makes your cells 
align in a certain way to create your body mm. what makes a tree grow the way that it, it that it does what connects us in all these mysterious and magical ways what creates coincidences and things where you start to think about things and pray for things or have your mind on things which creates a ripple effect of everything else yeah. it's like there's a centralized energetic thread to everything that mm. organizes everything that gives us the life and then what we go to when this physical form decays and dies. Mm. That's what I understand God to be right now. And so in my, you know, a few years ago when I was like, okay, now that's my conception of God. You can pray, you can uh, look for synchronicities, coincidences, mm. or just experience them when you're on your own path. And like, mm. maybe you're not even religiously doing anything. And I don't believe that religion is necessarily the best course of action because religions as they exist in most of the mainstream ways today, they're corrupted by human influence. Mm -hmm. And humans, unfortunately, if, if you let a human in between you and the divine of God, then there's just another point where they can have their own tendencies to skew the truth in the basis of what they want you to do or they, mm -hmm. what their mission is and what their goals are. But if you just go, me to God, to this energy connection, which is in you and in mm -hmm. everyone, then it's a lot easier to it's a lot harder to be misdirected because mm. there's no man in a funny hat being like, you have to do this and give us money and things. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of silly. So really that's where I've landed now is all these metaphysical philosophers, personal experience with interacting with that energy uh, that permeates everything um, of which that's the top dog mm. contains everything. Now there's a further kind of separation where, I think there are larger entities or whatever forces of varying degrees mm. that we can also interact with. Yeah. So, yeah, what do you so, think about yeah, that? De de yeah, I agree, definitely. So, first and foremost, we're checking in from Sweden and speaking of organized religion, we have the Church of Sweden, which is cocked beyond belief. So, yeah. they are, yeah, I had a discussion on Twitter uh, a few weeks ago or a month ago or so with their, uh, yeah, whomever has the Twitter account for the Church of Sweden talking about pedophiles. And I said, my gods hate pedophiles. And, and they were like, no, you know, we, ah, the usual stuff. Then some, some based Christians actually came in to say that, you know, it says in the Bible that those who hurt children should be, um, I don't know the exact quote, but I'm sure the, the Christians in my audience will post in the comment section something about those who hurt children should be, you know, strapped with a weight around their neck and thrown in the sea or something like that. Fair, fair, fair thing to indeed, do. Indeed, indeed. In Minecraft, in Minecraft. In Minecraft. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. And, and of course, I know a lot of uh, traditional Catholics. They have their critique of the Catholic Church, the, the changes been made there over the last few decades. But anyway, my own take on God is quite similar as to yours. Like, it's, it's everything. When I say God, I mean everything. I mean the the life force within everyone. So basically, if something is alive, God is in there. Some humans have more God in them, which makes them more charismatic or alive. Some people, they have less God. And this can also be influenced by how you live. So if you live yes. the sloppa lifestyle, if you eat a lot of sloppa, if you if you have like your AirPods in all the time, you get fry, fried in your brain by, <laughs> by EMFs all the time, perhaps your, your connection to God is lessened. And of course, if you live, if you're never in nature, if you're never in the gym, if you, if you don't take care of your temple, it's hard for God to sort of permeate you. Uh, so I think that's also why a lot of guys are depressed, of course, because they don't really have that, they don't find God in them. Yep. Uh, so that is when I say God. And then of course, I'm a, I'm a pagan, a syncretic pagan. So I also believe in the gods. Which, so if I pray to Odin, for example, it's um, God is everything and Odin is one entity made up of uh, God also. So one example I used in a video I made uh, a year ago or so is that you have the, the sea. So everything is connected. And mm. then you have like the Baltic Sea and then you have the Atlantic. They are connected, uh, but they're also separate. Mm. Um, and then, of course, when it comes to humans as well, everyone is sort of interconnected. When we're sitting here, we're vibing together. We have a sort of, yeah, we're, we're connected in a way. And everything is connected and this is also when i say that everything matters everything is connected and what do you say with ripple effects one thought you have now can lead to a change in something that can change something else so this is also the we're going to get into this i thought to ask about black pilling but this is my the shortest response i have to like the most concise response to black pilling i have that everything you do matters so if you 
say you say something nice to a to a sensitive young man and he will feel good that day and he will in his good mood he will um, decide to start going to the gym or start reading a book or something that can lead to something else and then he in turn <coughs> says something profound to another sensitive young man and that leads to something else so so that is my take on uh, on that but uh, but yeah speaking of black pills and stuff like that it's always a hot topic so do you have any take on yeah so i had a i guess an observation or realization about this is that <clears throat> as a human we have an opportunity to become we're like an energy gate or a portal or however you want to think about it when energy comes to us we have an option to relay that energy out we have an option to just absorb that energy take it inside us we have an option to feel the energy observe it and then let it disperse and let it not affect us let it not actually come into us or we have an option to take it magnify it charge it think it let it within us and then blast it out mm. now notice i didn't say what type of energy you can do that with because you can do that with every type of energy positive energy and negative energy and the issue relies on what we consciously choose to do with the energy that we experience and then when we get to a certain level when we're conscious of our energy into what levels of energy and what type of energy we uh, intentionally produce within ourselves or channel or create so if someone on the internet or in real life is upset with their life, they are angry, they're, they're negative in general, and they're, they have this within them and they spew it out. That's mm. usually what's happening is they want to try to get rid of it. Yeah. They, bleh, you suck, you're gay, that's gay. You know, you're just negatively... Two uh, guys posting a picture out in the sunshine <laughs> without shirts, we're yeah, gay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, just having a good time, we must be gay. Basically... You have to realize that as this energetic portal, gate, whatever, magnifier, diminisher, you have to be intentional with the energy that you're receiving and manipulate it to the point where, of course, we want to really ignore negative energy, let that bounce off us, let mm. it, okay, I feel that, I'm not mm. going to embody, I'm not going to let that person put their negative on energy onto me and then I'm going to have a bad day and I'm going to negatively interact with everyone else in my life and then my family is going to be a bit down because I've had a bad day at work. Like mm -hmm. that kind of stuff is just unconscious behavior. The same goes for quote unquote black pilling mm. and it's really an intention of the enemy. Yeah. It's an intention of the enemy to put out these headlines which are may or may not be based in actual truth, mm. may be embellished, may be their forgetting the facts in order to for most people to read the headlines and go oh that's terrible mm. oh that really gets me down and yes sometimes the truth is not what we ideally want to happen to our homelands for mm. example that is usually the kind of blackpilling stuff that people are engaging with yeah. in the political world today or online but that is the intention of the enemy is mm. to do that is to lower your energy by putting out this fucking propaganda and you let them win. Mm. If you absorb that negative energy and you go, oh, it's hopeless. Mm. I'm not going to do anything. I'm I'm just going to sit on my phone and I'm not even going to go to the gym and I'm not going to study anything because what's the point? Look mm. at this headline. But what's happened? You, you're in your life. You've read a pixels on your phone or on the computer of some fabrication of some journal. And it's like, that is the intention. So are you going to let them bring you down? Mm. Because every micro... Uh, interaction with energy that you have and this can happen daily you can have moments of being happy and then moments of black pilling and everything if you're unconscious and mm. you're just reactive 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 but if you start your day at any point you can shift from being black pilled and negative and upset to a point where no i'm centered in myself i'm in control of my energy i can decide what i'm going to put out and then you're up leveling your level to the point where these negative things kind of just, they don't phase you anymore. They mm. bounce off you. And then you can, boom, I'm going to give a compliment to that stranger. And then they, oh, okay. Oh. And then they go home happy for the next few hours. Yeah. And they play with their kid in a better way. And their kid has a better experience for that day mm. because of a compliment that you gave them. So it's this, again, ripple effect of energy. Mm. And black pilling is just, it's cowardice, it's weakness. There's some level of information that you have to understand about the world, but information is just information. And then mm. our interpretation of that information becomes whether, like what energy we take from that. Mm. And yeah, the blackpilling is just resigning to 
finishing the battle and giving up before mm. it's even begun yeah. in any reality. So that's what I think about it. Yeah, definitely. And something to keep in mind also, which I always point out. So both of us of course, talk about this, you know, with diet and with, you know, what you, what you feed your mind. So this also like when you can control what you feed your mind, because it will have an impact. Something I usually take as an example, if someone is a lot on, on X, which is a nice platform now, I'm really enjoying it since Musk took over. But, you know, uh, and I'm quite conscious, so if I have unfollowed someone on Twitter, some nationalist guy, because they post too many, <coughs> too many videos of these white guys being beaten up. Because if you watch that enough, so for any sensitive young man who might be watching this, if you watch 10 videos in a row where a white guy gets beaten up by some sort of stranger, that will have an impact in your in your psyche. So it's not only like you see it on a screen because you will interpret that as, okay, white, white is weak, white get loses, white will get beaten up. So that's so important to not view yourself because then your body will start to understand it as being the reality. So instead be like, watch only when white guys are winning. So this is especially important for you to, when you want to do something, because if you bombard your mind with, it's over, it's hopeless, everything, yeah, then you will, you know, it's, it's a quite rational thing to just give up. So then you need to put yourself in a mindset that the rational thing is to actually go out and conquer. So it's better to watch, you know, maybe, yeah, maybe some fight where, where the white guy wins. So that's something to keep in mind as well, that even if you know that, uh, it has an impact. It can also be good to, um, yeah, limit the amount of black pilling propaganda you put in. And of course, you can view it as enemy propaganda, like this white man weak. And this is something they do also. You can see it quite often that white man is always being portrayed as a dork. Yeah. So and uh, like the white white uh, protagonist, like you had in the 80s, they were cool, like Dolph Lundgren, Sylvester Stallone, all of these guys, cool, cool masculine guys. And now it's the uh, boss girl instead being, yeah. the, being the cool guy so something to keep in mind when we're talking about magic and psychological war warfare and everything like that that it does have an impact and it does have an impact on how you perceive yourself as well if you bombard your mind constantly with this enemy propaganda and then of course also if you're constantly angry and sad and hopeless you don't really have the creative energy within you so if we're talking about you know channeling god in you if you're constantly like this in life, you, you uh, shut yourself off, you're constantly sad. Yeah, of course, it will be hard for the divine energy to, to flow through you. So, um, yeah. Pretty much everything that they do and how the modern world is set up is to try to cut you off mm. from that connection. And that connection is where all divine inspiration comes from, where creativity comes from, where perfect health will come from. All of that cannot work if you are bombarded on like it's so powerful that it can per permeate through any of this stuff. But to the unconscious person who is being assailed on all fronts by the food that they're eating being zog slop, mm. uh, the plastic that they're wearing, the polyester, mm. the chemicals in their home, the EMF from everything around them, mm. uh, the propaganda that they're filling their mind with the chemicals in the air that they're spraying, uh, the list goes on and on. Yeah. And you can look at all of these things, at the vaccina vaccinations that they're injecting into children and people, mm. uh, grown-ups as well, the heavy metals that cloud this. Like People figured it out before that this is all to kind of cloud the spiritual connection mm. because the spiritual connection to God is what energizes us and is what is really going to lead us to act in a way that is most beneficial for most sentient beings mm. in this world for the good of all. That's really the highest ideal of spirituality is act in a way where if possible, the good of all is the highest ideal in mm. any business transactions, both people are winning. Mm. Uh, whatever you create is for, to help people, whatever you're selling is going to inform them. It's going to help them. It's mm. going to, you know, bring them joy. And you're not looking to scheme against others. You're not looking to negatively affect others or take things away from others because that is really the uh, spiritual uh, philosophy of the demonic side of things. The like communists. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, zero-sum game of life. Like yeah. if someone gains something, someone else has to lose. Yeah, which is not true. You know, exactly. so it's like true. the natural patterns of God is what you see in the forest where things are growing, there's abundance, there's fruit flowing, uh, falling off the trees because there's mm. so much fruit, like the sunshine, all of that, it kind of, that is the natural expression of God. Mm. And then with whatever corruptions that have gone and come through 
into our society today. It's like this slow uh, attack on the natural patterns of God. And when you go against the laws of nature, you get disease, you get sick. Mm. You cannot go against the laws of nature without paying the price. Like mm. That is yeah. just full stop. So what we're seeing today is so many things that are going against God, going against nature, most of them consciously created by a certain underclass. And that is really what we have to free ourselves of. Mm. And that's what uh, taking care of your own health is about, making your own food, understanding that everything in this, most things in this world are actually bringing you down, bring your energy mm. down. And you, as you slowly chip away at all these things, you get this renewed vigor and this renewed energy and creativity and, and, and are able to inspire others. Mm. And that should really be the goal of everyone in their day-to-day -day actions, whatever they may be doing. Yeah, definitely. So uh, to I will actually black pill a bit now, but it's an important <laughs> black pill. <laughs> so I spent the last 20 minutes talking about how bad black pills are, and now I'm going to black pill. But uh, about pornography, so this is only something I've thought about, like how much creativity has been destroyed by guys getting their you know vibration levels down very low just spending all of that vril all of that energy just to to watch something on the screen uh but the white pill of, is of course that if you for any any young man now if you are still under the yoke of pornography uh you, i assure you you will notice a difference if you stop watching pornography that you will have a lot more life joy and a lot more creativity so basically when you, to use a, a dramatic example, if you watch pornography, you can see it as an assault by a, a literal demon all the time coming to get your life force from you, making you unable to create things because the creative energy, divine energy, it's something that, yeah, you need to be at a certain level to actually channel. But if you continuously pull yourself down via bad things, bad things as such as watching pornography or doing other similar things, just living a bad life, uh, so that's something if you if you feel like low all the time there are so many things you might just tweak and this is also something I saw quite a quite horrible story from from the Netherlands uh, a young woman or 30 or something she had been uh, yeah she had gotten help taking her own life and I was just wondering okay There's a lot of them yeah yeah and I was just wondering okay all of these factors, I would have, I would like to have a good look at. Same thing for young men who who take their own lives. Okay, how many of these factors could have been helped? Because mm. I am quite sure that, you know, if you had removed all of the sog slop, all of the EMFs, all of the just bad things, get him out in nature three hours a day, get him to fast, get him to fast for twenty four hours, get him to rediscover the joy of eating or training really hard to get that kick of good hormones, something like that. So I believe that many of these things, they are connected, the biology and the, the spirit, but to receive the spiritual benefits, you also have to first have a good, you need to take care of your temple, so you can't completely neglect it. And I'm sure many of these individuals, they don't even know, they don't even know that EMFs are bad. I, I only started to have my phone on flight mode, so I have it on flight mode basically all the time now. Uh, but maybe only two years ago, I had it on, you know, on, on its regular settings. Yeah. Maybe even Bluetooth on, God yeah. forbid. Yeah. Uh, three years 5G. ago. Yeah, 5G, even that. So maybe, okay, it was four, four or five years ago, I had polyester underwear. <laughs> 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 uh, and I was like, it was five years ago only. It's not a lot of time. So, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of guys, they have so many, so many factors they can improve and yeah this is so so good we can spread the the good message also you know to watch out for many of these things same with diet same with alcohol now thank the gods alcohol culture is from what i've seen at least uh, from younger guys it's not really a thing when i was young um when i was a young man i'm a, I'm a venerable <laughs> ancient now <laughs> so alcohol culture was still sort of a thing but now when i talk to younger guys maybe guys in their early 20s it's not really some guys might still drink but it's not really a thing because they're more into the <coughs> sigma grind set you know wanting to get jacked and everything like that so so that's a white pill i'd say yeah the the thing about pornography is and it's i, I don't even really think about it because it's been so long <coughs> since that was an issue in my life mm. and it was an issue in my life at, at a time early 20s mm. um but since then because it's it's such an elementary step mm. to be like, yeah, you shouldn't be watching porn. Like, mm. obviously, there's no argument where you sitting in your room, looking at your phone like this, 
touching yourself like a monkey. Like it's disgusting. Like there's, <laughs> there's is, no, and anyone that's going to stand up, but actually porn is a uh, beautiful <laughs> expression of uh, sexuality in today's world. No, mm. you're garbage. You're demonic. You're trying to corrupt people. It's created by demons. Mm. Uh, it, it sucks away life force, literally. And, you know, the people involved in producing it are like trafficked mm. individuals. Like, and you're watching that. Like, it, it's all these negative forces aligning. And then the whole, you know, if you're masturbating and ejaculating, your vril is literally like tanking each yeah. and every time uh, you deplete your life force that way mm. when a sublimation of sexual energy to the higher energetic centers is the kind of first steps yeah. to any high level spirituality, mm. whether you do that through semen retention or just conscious sex with, you know, a really good partner that you're in a relationship with, you know, casual sex does the same thing. You're just like splitting your life force between all these different souls. Some of mm. them that may be corrupted as well. And you take that energy. Sex is a sacred energy exchange, yeah. SEX. So you have to be conscious of that. When you're doing it to yourself with porn, you're having a sacred energy exchange with these demonic forces. Mm. That's yeah. what's happening. And then you wonder why that you feel bad and you feel depressed and you mm. feel like you can't be social and you don't feel attracted to girls anymore in real life. It's like that is all connected. That is what is happening. So to, to even defend it, to argue that we should have it and when kids are discovering it on an iPads when they're like six years old, it, it's so incredibly effed up mm. and pornographers should be redacted in Minecraft, of course. So yeah, that's that point. But upon regime change, they will be jailed. Yes. To put it mildly. Yes. So, they yeah. will. When yeah. we win. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, so yeah, big, big topic. Uh, I don't actually know how how it looks with. Perhaps I don't even want to know to know how widespread it. I can only suppose it is. But uh, but yeah, definitely the next big political issue. I would say for for most countries, to just ban it outright. Uh, some might say it's freedom of speech, but there is no speech in it. It's not some well-formulated political argument where, you know, seeing trafficked women be, being abused in front of the camera. So, I mean, yeah, I'm all, all for banning it. No, no question about it at all. So, yeah. It's just one of the ways that they try to corrupt you. And if you want to bring your highest self forth uh, and get stronger in the gym and all these other things, it's all related. As I said, like... You, oh, it's just a polyester t-shirt. I'm just going to wear it. I've had it for years. It's Nike. It makes my arms look good in the in the gym palm. It's like, well, if you accept that and you understand who first created polyester, okay, what else is that group doing in, in the world? Mm. Then like if you accept the energetic exchange, so everything that you do, everything that you accept is a contract you go into that your soul enters. And if you're watching porn, that's your soul going into, I'm going to accept this demonic influence. The polyester, I'm going to accept this. Whatever you buy is a soul contract because money is a spiritual tool, mm. really. It's a it's a measure of energy. Whatever you vote with your dollar to purchase, you're supporting. Mm. So if you are buying the polyester cool Nike wear, then you're accepting that they're also pushing this transgender thing when they have the posters full of the transgender and like all of that stuff and the little kids. Like mm. You are supporting that with your money. So you really have to do an, an audit uh, about what you're accepting and what you are contributing your spiritual energy towards any energy at all money as well because until you do that until you just like rip apart all these other egoic attachments that you may have to like your favorite gym clothes or whatever else if you discover evidence that is compelling enough to say okay it's probably not good that i have this in my life mm. and you don't do it so there's the awareness of the consciousness and then if you lie to yourself to continue and you ignore it, and you say, oh, it's just a little bit of porn, whatever, like mm. oh, that'll corrupt you as well. Mm. If you're unconscious, it may have an effect for sure. But then if you become conscious of it and continue to do it, you incur a higher karmic debt mm. that you're continuing that thing. You know of it, you know of it's bad and you will have, it will have more of an effect on you mm. uh, going forth. So it's, it's really a question of analyzing doing that spiritual hygiene check across mm. really everything that you do day to day and you know yeah definitely something i thought about as well becoming more like conscious overall about what you what you eat primarily when you when you start becoming more conscious about okay maybe i shouldn't eat this meal full of seed oils so the more developed you become the less the, the more sensitive you become to sloppa basically yeah. Yeah. so now i um 
Um, I couldn't really eat many of these things that I could have enjoyed like 10 years ago because I didn't know anything more. But now all you can taste is like the, you can just feel the what fried. you're eating. Yeah, yeah. The frying. So it's, um, it's good in a way because you feel better, um, but you also know you also can't enjoy these bad things, which is a good thing in the long run, of course. But many red pills to take, many things to, to discover. Ultimately, it's good. And of course, in the, in the long run, hopefully it can change you know, we can change it now, but he's talking about it. So, uh, yeah, do keep your phone on flight mode. Uh, do not wear polyester underwear. Do not eat seed oils. So this is something we can say now. Then, for my own sake, like, politically speaking, it's my goal, of course, to make actual political change. So we ban many of these things. Hmm. Because now I feel so bad for these normies going into a food store. They, they have no idea because they don't even read the ingredient list. So then you have like this long text, something that might be marketed as uh, something good. And then you have full on slop bar uh, ingredient list. And I don't blame these normies because they aren't, they haven't taken the time to actually look through. And I think it's a bit, you know, I, I'm not a libertarian. I, I like when the state says this is this, these are the rules. You can't damage our people by these business practices. So for me, optimally speaking, uh, yeah, yes, the state could come in and you know re redefine the guidelines of what you can actually do, including porn again, uh, alcohol. Um, I know it's a touchy, to I know it's a touchy subject. We have system Bolaget in Sweden, so it's actually a monopoly. Uh, now I know many Swedish guys that will get angry at me if I defend it, but I would rather just having it controlled and the the revenue going to the state. No, the Swedish state, as it looks right now, it's not. You know, it's not optimal or anything, but when when our guys are in the positions of power, they can they can do good things with it at least. So, but yeah, anyway, the the main takeaway, I suppose, is that there are so many things to just so many red pills to take when it comes to our health, and definitely, if we had a good leadership that actually cared about the the health of the population, they would go in and say to many companies, okay, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. So I'm all for a free market when they actually behave so yeah. state comes first and then the free market if they do something good so in sweden as the yeah as i joked with you before about raw milk you asked okay raw milk and i said you know it's easier to get cocaine than raw milk yeah so it's these stupid regulations that make it um yeah anarcho tyranny it's hard to get raw milk it's easier to get other stuff um so um yeah it's it's very curious because the raw milk thing um you look at who first started those laws and then you wonder really what is their intention? Uh, you know, it's a red pill in itself to mm. discover why did they ban it? And ultimately it was to stop uh, the small family, small farm mm. having a cow, which produces a couple of gallons of milk, which can really feed a family mm. per day, every day with one cow. Mm. And so, but if you make it illegal to have that raw milk and you have this scare campaign to say, no, 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 that's got to go through a pasteurization. Mm. You've got to boil it uh, to kill all the negative bacteria uh, inside and then drink it. Um, you know, there, there are many studies that show pasteurized milk versus raw milk fed to animals. Uh, the pasteurized milk animals uh, become less fertile. Mm. So then it's like, okay, I've said this a bunch before, but a lot of these things all lead back to uh, reducing your health, reducing your fertility, decreasing the power of the populace so that they're weaker and more easy to be controlled. Mm. Like when you view everything in terms of those terms, then everything makes sense. The raw milk is just one aspect of that. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I, I've thought about a fun post on X and then it was like, okay, I have imaginary slaves and they will get unlimited screen time, unlimited <laughs> pornography, unlimited soy and grains, and they're not allowed <laughs> eggs, they're not allowed raw milk, yep. they aren't allowed the gym. Yep. And it, it makes perfect sense. Also with, <clears throat> now it's Pride Month, I suppose, uh, the, uh, the anti-family sentiments as well. So it sort of goes into, if you want to destroy a nation, it makes perfect sense, many of these things that are being pushed to us. So something to keep in mind that many of these things they uh, they want they want you to do it and then of course they they don't care about you so it's it's a good way it's a good argument for us to put forth that okay people who don't care about you to say the least they want you to behave in a certain way they want you to be weak dependent on um, you know now we're in Sweden we have we don't have such a predatory medical system as in the states but I know in the states they have a lot of you know, it's um, the doctors. Sure, we have some some stuff in Sweden as well with bad prescriptions. But in the U.S., it's 
predatory in the way that every human is just a, a piece of... You want to get them hooked on, on drugs, basically, mm -hmm. because it's a lot of... Whereas mm -hmm. buying raw milk is quite quite cheap. Uh, fasting 24 hours. It costs nothing, but it does good for your health. The, the slave thing is really interesting because that is the mentality of so many people today that is like accepted. Mm. Slave mindset. In ancient Rome or ancient Greece, probably both, the mm. slaves literally weren't allowed to use the gymnasiums mm, yeah. because then they would be weaker. Mm. So if you're not going to the gym or training in some way outdoors right now, you're a slave. Mm. That's yeah. how you have to think about it. You yeah. want to motivate yourself to go to the gym, you are a slave mm. if you're not physically training to become stronger mm. because one day there will be an opportunity where you need to be strong and fast in order to save yourself, save your mm. family, save your nation, all of those things. So you really got to eliminate the slave mentality from pretty much every area of your life mm. if you can. First becomes your training with eating the slave food, the grains, uh, cooking everything, mm. uh, seed oils, everything like that. But also to, to remove things that really are slave activities, like working most of your time for someone else and then getting taxed on it. Mm. It's like slaves get their wages garnished, you know? And so legally, of course, doing all that you can in order to mitigate those things. But it really will come to a point, I think it is at the point where you'll have the people that will accept being a slave. And then you have people that would rather die than be a slave. Mm. And they would rather choose the uh, unpredictability of freedom. Mm but the freedom of freedom over being the confined, safe, slave yeah. existence. Yeah, definitely. Something to point out here as well that, <clears throat> as most of you know, most of you probably know that right-wing parties have gained popularity in, in Europe uh, and elsewhere quite rapidly as of late. First and foremost, it has to do with you know the general cityscape, that Gotham citification of, of, of um, every city in the West, basically. People are fed up with it. Something else to keep in mind also that the food prices skyrocketed also. So there you have families, you know, both man and woman are working to, you know, buy decent food, buy meat for their families, and then getting taxed crazily amount, and the taxes are going to literally replacing them in their own countries. So the uh, the, the boiling point, we're reaching it quite soon, I'd say. So it's always this tipping edge. I know in Ireland things are heating up because after all, you know, things are tough economically. You go to the supermarket, you want to buy the, the good stuff, so egg, um, meat, milk. Uh, and then you also know that you're being taxed to pay for these guys coming in, refugees so-called, and uh, then you have then you have to say to your children, yeah, you know what, we can't pay for this or that. And then you have massive amounts of your, your hard-earned money going to <laughs> replacing. So uh, yeah, for, for anyone wondering, <laughs> God, there's, there, okay, I do not let anger dictate what I do and how I feel, but that situation, that exists right now, mm. there's nothing more infuriating mm. than literally you paying through coercion of the government to fund your invasion. Mm. Like there's nothing more cucked mm. and more slave-like and antithetical to the natural orders of God mm. that it could make me angry <laughs> if I let it. But yeah. feel the anger, become a conscious wizard and transmute that energy into a gym session, yeah. into creating a, a fiery speech that you then put online, something like that. Energize yourself by transmuting the lower order chakra energetics that can be uh, stimulated mm. by things that you see. Because if you let it just keep you angry, you're going to stay there, you're going to repel good things. But mm. you can let it anger you and then <sighs> I'm bringing it up here, I'm yeah. transmuting it to love, to inspiration, to beneficial things that are going to help me and my people. Mm. Yeah, I have fueled many gym sessions, <laughs> many, many heavy squat sessions. Yes. With so thank you. Angry. Thank you for the motivation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. The, the Swedish state trying to replace me in my own country. Thank you for the <laughs> Thank motivation. you for the biceps. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's how you got to think about it, man. Like you yeah, have yeah. to be a little bit silly, a little bit step back, laugh at the madness of it all because the madness can consume you if mm. you let it. Like this world is so curious in the ways and it doesn't make sense in a lot of ways. And, you know, we are these souls that come in and 
we're in this physical body in this world at this time and maybe we've been here on this plane before maybe mm. we're you know time is a flat circle we're existing at other points in time simultaneously who knows for sure yeah. what is that is exactly happening but you have to keep yourself sane in a way by not taking it seriously and simultaneously taking it seriously mm. like that sounds like uh, what does that even mean? Taking it seriously, not taking it seriously. It means this existence is under your control. Take it seriously to direct the energy that you have and feel towards positive things that create, again, going back to that point of the most benefit for the most beings in this world that you mm. can. Do not take it seriously in the sense of absorbing the negativity and negative energy and interpretations that can come from this fucking clown world. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well said. <laughs> So basically how I think about it is that I, I know I'm getting cucked by the state. If I don't pay my taxes, there will there will come armed men to me and, you know, throw me in jail if I don't pay my taxes. Yep. So I'm literally being forced to fund my own replacement. <laughs> Same thing for everyone in the West, by the way. Uh, what I can do to save my, my pride a bit is to simply try to work towards uh, regime change. That's how I cope. I cope with the <laughs> fact that I'm getting cucked big time by the state. Uh, I can only do that and then I, I know I try to work full steam towards regime change. That is what I can do. Uh, then I try to not dwell on it too much, you know, when the tax um, when, when the time comes around. Uh, because if you think too much about it, you will... Uh, yeah, if you're angry all the time, you can't really do productive things either. So use, try to tap into the anger, do something productive with it, but don't let it poison your soul completely. So that's also when it comes to, as I talked about uh, a little earlier, that what you feed your mind, if I only feed black pills, yeah, I will be, I will be like this and just lie, on, lie down and give up. Uh, yeah. So it's quite important to not think too much about it. Be aware that you're getting, you're getting mugged big time, you are. Dear white man, wherever you are, you're getting mugged big time. Know this. You can at least work towards it. You can at least do something to push the overtone window in the right direction. It can be such a simple thing as going on X, create a profile and just liking whenever I interact with a politician and <laughs> like my stuff. It's, it's such a simple little thing. It, it does help because everything matters. So, and again, everything is interconnected. Um, so, uh, yeah, but uh, again, very important point to not let it just consume you from the inside as and far, just take a step back and just look at it. As far as the public perception of things like, oh, what does it matter that I like someone's post? The masses, normies, whatever you want to call them, they go with the flow. They go with whatever is the perceived most popular opinion. So there are two things to realize. One is that what we believe and the things that we're talking about here, they are oriented towards the natural way of God and the natural orders of life and truth, honor, beauty, all of these things. Most people have that as their operas uh, modi, like the, the highest order ideal. They may not be conscious of it, but it's like, yeah, that feels right. That's, mm. that's good. People should get a fair, everything, go in life, all of that stuff. That is what most people value uh, as their highest thing. So, as like the whole game of these regime, these parasites is to get you to believe that that is not the case, that most normal people don't believe in that conspiracy theory stuff to give Maybe I'm the crazy one. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to say that at, at my family dinner because what if like they think like this? And of mm. course, there are some people that are programmed to have the liberal perception, but you have to speak the truth that you feel in your soul. And if you're too scared to do that, every interaction where you hold yourself back and say, oh, I don't know if I should say that here. Mm. That is like a spiritual cuckery in itself. Mm. Yeah. And all of those things add up across all the thousands of people that believe the headlines and don't say what they mean. Um, all of that results in the perception that there are less people that think mm. like us, think that that are aligned with the, the truth and, and all the rest of it. So like liking the post in support of the golden one or myself when we, when we do things doesn't even have to be political. Um, then like that is a vote in the yeah. public consciousness perception that eventually when that's strong enough where it's already happening, right? Like every politician gets ratioed every mm, post yeah. like gets outdone. Any journalist, like scumbag mm. headline bullshit 
gets fucking destroyed like yeah. reply community note whatever it is like actually this is wrong like that's all happening and it's turning and, and that's why you should white pill about all this yeah. because compared to five years ago like it's an entirely different world there's so much consciousness expanding mm. so white pill about that but also don't forget to accelerate mm. and you can accelerate in your own way with your vote of confidence online with your vote in person in, in your political system even though i don't necessarily like i'm not even gonna say that you should vote for the best option that you have do that and then in other ways energetically consciously within your community mm. uh within your own life build things that you don't necessarily have to rely on big daddy government to come and save mm. you because i don't think that's necessarily happening even though we can contribute good things to the change of the mm. guard the regime all that stuff um but yeah like you have to do something yeah like if you're seeing this and you you're like agreeing yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but you aren't even vocalizing that to mm. your family then you're one you're a coward Mm. straight up yeah. like I've been a coward in my life when I haven't said things like back in the day I'll, I'll say most things in every situation now mm -hmm. because I thank God have the capacity to do that mm. you know my own businesses I understand that that's really tough and and this is one of the ways if you can't do it publicly because of your job then do it anonymously online to mm. support that thing in, in the ways that we have discussed and like this is real actionable things that may not seem like the biggest step but it all helps and yeah, it all it translates to shifting where the point of no return happens mm. where the normies all go, oh, actually, this is, seems like a better thing. Like, fuck that stuff. Mm. Now I want this. And then it's like, and we go to the golden Aquarian age. Yeah, definitely. So what I think about is that every, everything, every single day is a vote day. So mm. you go, whatever you do, it's a vote. So we have EU, EU elections coming up. It's an important vote. It takes you 30 minutes to go and vote. The next day you vote for something else. You vote with your time uh, by simply pressing like when, when we're trying to ratio these lying journalists. I mean, it does matter and everything is interconnected and everything, if you view every single day as a voting day and you vote with your, with your wallet as well, do you support this big corporation that is not acting nicely in other ways or do you support someone who actually aligns with your overall message and then of course doing such a simple thing as you know being online uh, it's so important um, it is the the most like time effective you can think you can do now to be on X to be on Twitter <laughs> just press like on on our stuff basically especially when we interact with um, I'm shilling our X account <laughs> <laughs> at Sobra <laughs> So, but, uh, but yeah, it is important because politicians, they are humans as well. They respond to pressure 100%. Uh, Ireland is a good example because the Irish, they are fired up now and they, they aren't taking it anymore. The politicians, they, they understand this. They don't want hate speech laws. They don't want to have their communities full of unvetted young men from the third world. They understand this. They also understand that if they don't get enough votes, they're out of a job. And mm -hmm. they don't want mm -hmm. to be because they want to keep their job. So therefore, they have to actually conform to the will of the people. And then you have online, if the county council of um, Galway or wherever it might be, if they say diversity is our strength, and then you have a thousand Irish guys saying diversity is absolutely not our strength. We don't want this plantation anymore. We don't want to be colonized again. Then they might be, okay, hmm, maybe this is not the best idea to actually, you know, alienate your own population so social pressure it works i know it's you know popular among certain circles to say that oh all politicians are so bad many of them are bad but they also respond to pressure and if you push certain things such as we don't want to be replaced we don't want to pay for our own replacement they will respond eventually sure there are true believers in the political class they will go you know um to the end with it but there are also those who will actually change we have a good example from Sweden here, the moderates back in, well, say eight, eight, 10, 12 years ago, they were very pro open borders and everything like diversity is our strength. Now we have many of these guys in the party who actually said, okay, we were wrong. Uh, we were naive. Uh, now we're going to have you know, stronger borders, even talking about sending out, uh, you know, criminal elements. Remigration. Well. Yes. It's possible. It is possible. It is possible. Very easy. And uh, this is also, you know, the main takeaway of any discussion about magic and God and everything that we create first, we decide for ourselves what is possible. It is possible with remigration. And then you have the enemy wizards on the other side. They say, it's not possible. Whatever you do, it's not possible. Stay in your lane, stay down. 
And then we have to say, you know, we're not going to stay down. We're not going to stay silent. We're going to use our willpower to actually implement our change. So re-migration is fully possible. Anything is possible. Anything is you know, possible. Anything yeah. that you can think up is, is possible. And whatever damage is done can be reversed. And whatever society that we want to create, we can create. And yeah. it first begins in the mind. And even if you don't do anything physically to advance our goals you can send your vril you can send mm. your energy you can visualize winning us attaining power people being happier people being freer all of this if you sit in meditation and you consciously think about these things and you know say a prayer whatever it is and and visualize these new beginnings these this golden age you know people being put in jail they need to go in jail that contributes as well. Mm. Instead of thinking about the latest, the latest Marvel movie, you know, that is why they create those things is to create, uh, to harness people's attention. Because mm. if you think, oh, Iron Man, wow, <laughs> Captain America, oh, like, then you're not thinking about the potential future of the Aquarian Age. Mm. And you're, you've been hijacked. Your mm. attention and your most valuable thing has been captured. So... If you find yourself doing that, scrolling TikTok is the same. Uh, you need to take back your energy. And, and like I said, if, if, if you're not in a position to like, actually do something, at least do that. Because at any point in time, you can send your drill to support others. Because, going back to the very start of the conversation, everything is connected through God. Yeah. And like us through the video right now, you're listening to this and you're feeling certain things. You're resonating with the truth you want to pursue beauty like that is all connected and that's why we do what we do online i think yeah awesome all right cool cool do you have any final words or were those your final words they were my final words, words. <laughs> so uh, yeah. for now for now for now yeah uh so yeah where can people find you for i suppose most know already but you can you can uh, let people know where to find you yeah so at solbra on most platforms um go check it out i've got a lot of good stuff out the main thing is my book the soul way you can get that on Amazon. It's a distillation of uh, all the amazing things that I've learned. And I hope to channel that and put it into information in a book so that you can live the best life possible. Uh, so go get that and give it a five-star review if you like it. Thank all you, right. brother. Awesome. Cheers. Thank you.